Hi, my name is Rabbi Philip Weintraub. I'm at Congregation B'nai Israel here in St. Petersburg, Florida, not Russia. We love to enjoy the warm sun, the beautiful beaches, and study Torah together. So it's great to have you here today. As you can see, I haven't gotten my hair cut yet, but uh, glad to see all of you and to study Torah together. I'm talking a little bit from Brachot 9b, from the first Mishnah, or the first chapter of Mishnah Brachot, the very, the second Mishnah of Torah, of Talmud, all of that. And the question is, when do you say Shema in the morning? So, we have a debate. Of course, we're Jews, we can't all agree. So some say, When you can see the difference between the Techelet and the Lavan, when you can see the difference between the blue thread on your tzitzit and the white one. So that is a certain amount of light in the sky. Uh, Rabbi Eliezer Omer, no, not just that difference, but a more subtle difference. Ben Techelet Lakarti, which is a type of green. So between this blue and the green, so now we need some more light in the sky because we have to be able to see the difference between the blue and green. The Gomra Adhane Tachama, and you need to finish it by sunrise. Um, so it continues, Rabbi Yehoshua Omer, Ad Shaloshaot, Shukhain Derech B'nei Malachim Lamod B'Shaloshaot. That we should really say Shema by the third hour of the day, and remember, halachic hours are not the same as uh, uh, actual hours, but from splitting the day into 12 equal periods. Well, there's the custom that the important people, these children of the kings, um, they at least would be up by that time. And so you want to make sure that we do it in a reasonable time of the morning. However, whether you say Shema in the morning or the evening, whatever time you say it during the day, if you miss the correct time to say Shema, you didn't lose anything. Because you've read Torah, and it's a blessing to read Torah no matter what time during the day. So it's interesting. Um, that's the Mishnah. So that's the Mishnah 1, or chapter 1, Mishnah 2. We then go into the Talmud. And the Talmud now goes a little bit more in, in the distinction. I'm just going to read it in English. I'm using Safaria, which is the um, Steinzaltz translation in the new really fabulous Koran Talmud, which I highly recommend. For those of you who have or will or may think about Daf Yomi in the future, as, as I did last cycle. Um, so what is the Tachelet and what is the white? If you think that it is just a pile of white wool and a pile of wool that's dyed Tachelet, couldn't you tell the difference between the two at night? No, it has to be the actual strings on your tzitzit so that you're walking along and you look down and you suddenly realize, okay, I can tell the difference. There's enough light in the sky to see between the two and therefore it's early enough to, um, to say Shema or late enough to say Shema. So then the Talmud brings in a Baraita, meaning another text of that time frame. And it, it gets some different ideas from a few different rabbis. Rabbi Meir says that the day begins when you can distinguish between a wolf and a dog. So now we're getting fairly particular, you know, a wolf and a dog, they're both creatures. Now, I don't think we're talking here about a chihuahua and a wolf, but we're assuming some kind of uh, canine that looks fairly wolf-like. So you have to be able to see with a fair amount of detail. Um, Rabbi Akiva gives a different version that says when there's a difference between a domesticated donkey and a wild donkey. I'm not an expert on either of those, so I can't tell you how much light you need to see between those two. But again, this seems to be a fair amount of light in the morning. Then we get a particularly interesting text for a couple reasons. And Acharim Omrim, Acharim say, when can one, when one can see another person, and the, there's a note in Steinzaltz that in the 
uh, you were showing me that it's not just, it's, it's an acquaintance, someone you would, not a close, close friend, but someone that you would recognize. So when the Acharyim says, when you can see this other person at a distance of four cubits and recognize them. So you're a few steps away and you can see that's my friend or that's, that's someone that I know from. I'm familiar with them and I can see who they are and know who they are. And Rav Huna says the halacha is in accordance with Acharim, and a, um, which is interesting because a lot of the time, when a, you know, especially in the Mishnah, if, if someone is named, they're not the opinion we follow. But in this case, the, we have an answer that this is what we follow. Um, and Abaya adds on to this that um, the time that we say tefillin, the time, or the time that we put on our tefillin in the morning, is the same time as Acharim, that we shouldn't be putting on tefillin when it's completely dark. We shouldn't say Shema when it's completely dark for the morning Shema, but we should instead be at the moment that we can recognize one another. So this makes me think a little bit about the nature of Torah itself, and it makes me think about how we relate to other human beings. Because in our tradition, one of the things that we focus on, one of the things that I focus on, is the statement early in Bereshit that we are all created in the image of God. And if we interact with other people in the world recognizing that they are in the image of God, hopefully it gives us a little more patience with them. Hopefully it gives us a little more um, strength to have that patience, even in those moments when we don't already have it. And here, we're saying that we really can't pray until we can see the face of another. That if all we can make out is this distinct shape, but we're not really sure who it is, and we can't, we cannot pray until the moment when we know our surroundings. But it's not just the physical surroundings, it's the human surroundings. It's the people around us. We can't pray until we know who the people around us are. And as we go into Shavuot, I think about the human nature of Torah. You're in chaplaincy, uh, one, of the, one of the chaplaincy commentators speaks of the living human document. And I think about this as our, you know, the Midrash of Torah. That in a way, we, you know, we all have this Torah within us. We have the Torah of Imenu, the Torah of our mothers, and the Torah of Inu, Torah of our fathers. And then we have to live our Torah. And I think of the Midrash of us all standing together at Sinai, every Jew, whether they were born Jew, Jewish, or had found Judaism later, you know, we're reading tomorrow the book of Ruth, and the idea that we were all there. We were all a part of this. And so how can we possibly say Shema? How can we possibly pray before the time when we can see another person? And I think this feels especially relevant in this particular moment that we are all living in when the world is not what we seemed. The world is not how we imagined it. And even in our daily minyanim, we have to see one another in little boxes. It's a challenge. But I pray that this is a challenge we will all speedily overcome and that we'll be able to study Torah physically together, spiritually together. Amen. So I pray that this brief teaching on Shema and the importance of knowing who is with us will help us as we go into this day of prayer and study. Shavuot Tov, Hag Sameach, take care of yourself.